All right, here we go. We're super pumped today to have uh, Loïc Lemeur on, uh, who uh, is one of the great uh, French uh, <laughs> internet entrepreneurs from the uh, late 1990s and 2000s. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, we're super pumped to have you here. Thank you so much for doing this. My pleasure. Nice to, uh, nice to, thank you for having me. Yeah, great pleasure. So we'll talk about a bunch of stuff today. We'll talk about uh, uh, the, the internet, web one, uh, web two, which is basically the, mo the mobile wave. Then we'll talk about web three, which is what's kind of happening now. And at the end, we'll talk about uh, something even more interesting than all that stuff, which is uh, about happiness and spirituality. <laughs> it's all about technologies, you know, new and old ones. <laughs> exactly. So let's dive straight into this. So we start with your background and your internet stories. Can you please tell us a bit who you are? Tell us about your early life, uh, what you studied, and uh, how you ended up building internet companies. Uh, yeah, um, I am. Uh, my name is Loïc, um, and uh, I am 49 years old, and I am uh, an entrepreneur, an investor in probably about 100 startups um, over the course of you know, yeah, 20 years. So it's a lot, but it's not that much. I am also an investor in many funds uh, about, uh, I mean, doesn't matter, but many little or big funds in Silicon Valley. Um, and I'm French, as you can hear. Uh, I have spent, um, let's say, 10 years in Paris building startups, building a conference uh, called The Web, which was one of the very early, uh, the, the first one of its kind in Europe international entrepreneurship promoting entrepreneurship conference maybe we talk a little bit about, about it later uh it was called the web and at one point it was called the web three <laughs> so that that's a good one uh, what given was what's that? happening now yeah when was uh, the, the web three uh i started the web which was called, was called the blog it was completely by uh random by uh accident in in 2000 four something like this there is some background music here <laughs> um and that was uh that was because i started blogging so there is a japanese friend called joe ito who was who is still you know very was and is were very active on social and uh, i was sitting with him in a conference uh at the world economic forum that i was just invited to and he was right next to me with his computer and he was blogging and i told him what is this what what are you doing explain because i could see the comments coming in from all around the world and that was really the, the beginning even though i started uh messing around with the internet and starting businesses in 2000 <laughs> to 2000 uh, 1996 actually is, uh, is something <laughs> like this I, I i have to say this before we talk more about the conference but um i know what it is to live without the internet so i was in uh um, the, the business school I did, I should say, was uh, offline entirely when I was there in uh, 93 to 96. And it was very interesting, like to invite people to parties. We were distributing paper in mailboxes. <laughs> and, uh, and there, that's what I wanted to say. I did an internship, internship in a company called Texas Instruments, Semiconductors. Yeah, and sure. there, was, there was a guy there who was already on the internet. He was, uh, well, we were, we had email. He was one of the first companies in the world that had emails worldwide already, and only that. And suddenly he shows me this little thing called Mosaic, which was one of the, or the first browser, right? And he says, I have to show you something. I'm so excited. And uh, uh, he had up a page called David Philo's, Philo's and Jerry Young's homepage, which became later Yahoo. And there were only a few hundred websites on there, like the virtual museum of Louvre and other stuff. And that was the internet. And so I did, I clicked on every single link. I remember that. And I, I saw the whole internet. <laughs> so that, that's how I started. But uh, then there was a conference and a lot of things. So you actually did an internship prior to start entrepreneurship, but you never had like a real, like, kind of corporate experience you, you, I you never go had, straight into 
I never worked for anyone else um, than me <laughs> um, before, uh, except my internships. So I did uh, two or three internships, as you have to, but that's it. And uh, then in the last year of HSA, that business school, for those of you who don't know, uh, I have uh, started my first business, which was a web agency. So at the time, you know, uh, there were no websites. So I did the very first websites in France, like uh, Chanel, the luxury brand and others. I did, we have a debate with a friend, Patrick Robin, that I, uh, we, we both think we did the very first French banner ad. It was banner ads at the time. But anyway, it was very early, very fun. And, and I, what I see now is I have three sons. Um, and, uh, and one of them just started a business, Gauthier. It's a crypto business. And he, uh, he, he just tweeted uh, that he, uh, he had, um, uh, he had a, co a conference where he talked about crypto and all the latest developments to corporates and they were not <laughs> understanding anything. And I replied back, that reminds me when I was explaining the internet to them, it's the same. So I love corporates, but, uh, they, they, yeah, they tend to follow a little later. Great. That's awesome. We actually talk a bit later about uh, the, the kind of similarities and differences between Web 1, Web 2 and Web 3. So we can kind of understand the, the early days. Um, so, so what happened to this uh, uh, um, web, website agency story? How long did it last for? Uh, did, you, did you just leave this to do something bigger afterwards? Like what happened to this? Can you continue from there? I started seven companies uh, and with, you know, various success, of course, as an entrepreneur. And uh, this was the first one. I sold it. I sold them all. Um, so I sold it uh, very early on. I, I started this first. It wasn't really a communication business. I was helping brands, basically. And it was uh, not very lucrative at the beginning because brands did not understand it. But it was fun. Literally going to big corporates and telling them, hey, you need a website. So I did another one for a car manufacturer called Peugeot in France, which was the first uh, used cars, selling used cars on the Internet. And uh, that was in 96, 97. <laughs> and that was, that was fun. So I was doing that. And then very fast, there was uh, BBDO, Omnicom, BBDO, the, one of the largest advertising agencies in the world that got interesting in what I was doing and uh, showed up and said, hey, literally on a weekend, you know, I was invited to meet him uh, in a weekend in South of France. And while we were playing bull, petanque, <laughs> You told me, um, why don't, would you join us? I said, what do you mean? He said, would you, would you sell my company, your company and just be BBDO Interactive France? And I looked at him, I said, let me think about it. That was a Sunday. On Monday, I was with his CFO in his office and he acquired my company. So that's how I made my, my first you know, money. Then I, I walked there. I learned what it was to walk inside the corporate didn't like it that much so left soon after but uh, the agency went up to i don't know 70 80 employees something like something like that it was it was pretty cool we're doing really good stuff okay great well what happened afterwards oh my it's gonna take two hours if i tell you all that. <laughs> i mean so, so maybe we can maybe we can yeah. just stick to to the, the 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 company or the companies or projects you found out that you're the most proud of and basic may, maybe why yeah, because, you know, I, 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 I'll say this before I go to, to that question in particular. Um, I went through the internet bubble of 2000, which was very interesting. And uh, I think there is a risk we might, you know, we might see the same here that uh, what mm. people are calling crypto crash right now are not, is not real crash. Um, I'm kind of waiting for it, but uh, I wouldn't <laughs> say I'm really ready for it, but I'm, I, I think it's going to happen, like a huge like, correction, right? Because the markets, everything is kind of the same as in 1999, 2000. You know, the valuation of the public tech companies on the stock market are crazy, only going up, kind of, right? Except in the last days, but we'll see. And, uh, and, and uh, everything seems a little crazy. I, I, as I said, I'm an investor in funds. The valuations of the seed companies are insane. It's like 10 million is like standard now if you have a few power. Uh, do we still use PowerPoint? A few slides. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so it's a little, you know, and you, can, you see all those crypto projects like uh, 
like Nexus that we'll talk later, but uh, or, or Terra that uh, is passing $5.5 billion in assets after six months. Like, this is just insane. So I'm not saying this is not good. I am enjoying it myself. A ride is fun. But uh, I think we'll have another correction. So I saw that. I learned a lot. There was another one in 2008. Right, and it's hard when you go through this, and uh, it's very interesting because these days the crashes seem to last only a few weeks or a few months. Uh, this this was more like a year to two years, like where like everybody's selling houses, you know, people lose all their money. So it's interesting to see this in perspective. Anyway, to answer your question, the one I'm mostly uh, most proud of is definitely the web, my conference, because um, I started it randomly, as I said, with uh, I started blogging. And I thought, wow, this is so amazing. We needed to do an event about this. And, uh, and I started to gather 60, 50 people in Paris, then 100 people. Then I thought, OK, well, there is a lot of people interested, but I'm not really interested in French only. I've never been. That's one of uh, the characteristics. That, I mean, one of the things I, I feel like a citizen of the world. Not I'm French, of course, but I, it doesn't really matter where I am. So I did. Uh, I, I did this uh, first event, which was called Le Blog, uh, the blogs, and we had 200 people from uh, 25 countries in the Senate in Paris, and this turned into 4,000 people, 80 countries, largest tech conference, uh, one of the largest in, Euro in the world, for sure the largest in, in, in Europe. And we had uh, people like Jack Dorsey launch Square at the conference, but also like amazing people like Car Karl Lagerfeld who left us. But it was really a showcase for visionary so I, I didn't have only tech people i also had you know fashion and but it was mostly tech so uh you know reed hoffman the founder of linkedin uber was uh you know there is a debate on that but definitely the founders of uber were stuck in a cab they could not find a cab at my conference and that's when travis at least on youtube says it on you can find it says that he, he decided to do uber there so you could say that uber somehow started at my conference um and and so on so it was it was a magical period where um i would say thousands because four thousand a year for 13 years something like this uh, i mean you know quite like thousands of people learned from visionaries entrepreneurs from silicon valley coming to europe uh, they wanted to do the same. They started raising funds. The VCs came. The media came. So it became a, an amplifier of what you can do if you want to build something instead of, and nothing, nothing wrong about being an employee, but instead of being an employee, if you want to build, that's where you would, uh, you would go. So I'm, I'm very proud of this for the service it uh, provided and the vision it provided to uh, would-be and to entrepreneurs. Not really, of course, it was a financial success as well. Uh, we did very well. We sold it too. But but the, the that's not the point. I, I like to, to think about what, you know, it what matters. I do good for the world. Yeah, exactly. So this was definitely good for the world. Awesome. So so what, what was your, your vision of the internet in the early 2000s? You were talking about this crash. Like for you, how obvious was was it that it would change the world or were you actually thinking you, you have like a clear vision on the future on okay this is where the entire world is going or you were more thinking okay this is something really fun really interesting really dynamic and that's why i'm in there like how no. were you seeing the the, the 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 field at that time well it was a passion really uh i i tend to go all in in my passions uh and i i only do that for two or three things i have different passions now but uh at the time i was obsessed obsessed by the internet and the entrepreneurship came because i like building stuff but uh i was really obsessed i was on it all day long like like i am a lot too now but um what really was amazing for me and still is is this capacity to connect the world that suddenly we're all equal kind of of course there are people you know below you know basic needs but um it's it's what what basically i felt happened which is uh that you know now everybody can talk to anyone everybody can be connected to anyone and start projects which are either profit for for profit non-profit whatever 
and have worldwide international communities. So it, it doesn't really matter where you are. I was completely fascinated by these virtual teams working just with a, you know, with a computer somewhere or a phone now. Uh, and, and that all happened. Um, we went from local to global and feeling like, a, again, a global citizen and not, not uh, limited to where you live. And, uh, and that is fascinating, the sharing of information. Uh, but I have to say, now, because I like to talk about the negatives too, I had this dream, right? My, my references in my mind were Wikipedia, where, uh, you know, Tim, Tim Berners-Lee, uh, you know, like these visionaries were announcing an open web where everything would be already decentralized and open. And it's, it's like nothing that crypto has invented. These topics were there and it did not happen. Uh, all we, we ended up with was, uh, for now at least, huge monopolies, of course, that, that we did not really see coming, like Facebook and, you know, and Google and Amazon and, uh, and Apple and so on. But it's, uh, I was dreaming of something else, to be honest. I was dreaming of a place that would be way more open source knowledge, open source code, open source companies. So I'm hoping that crypto does this. Yeah, I wanted. I mean, basically, we can. We, we, this is a perfect introduction to the second part, which is about crypto and Web three. So, do you have more hope now? Yeah, you're seeing that what's what's happening there. Honestly, I don't know. Let's 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 face it. I I still have the same hope, but I don't know because the question is, will we have uh, walled gardens, right? Like where 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 we're building huge companies that are private and closed. So I, I'm a beginner on crypto, so I, I will share what I know. But like, of course, you know, don't, you know, don't blame me if I, if I don't know much yet, because I have other topics of, uh, uh, centers of uh, my attention, which we talk about after, uh, which is spirituality, indigenous tribes and old ancestral knowledge, which I think is unknown and undiscovered mostly. So that, that honestly is where my, most of my time goes now, but for crypto, uh, you can look at it as Coinbase, right? Fully legal working as best as they can with the uh, governments. And crypto.com that just financed for $700 million this arena in LA. These are world garments. These, these are the Googles and the Amazons and the, yeah. um, and the Facebooks, right? They're, they're closed. Like I, I, I like what crypto.com is doing, but I also see that when I do a, a, a transaction there, which I don't anymore, uh, they, they give you a price and it's not the price I get on Qcoin, right? So, yeah. so there is like hidden profit there um and not transparency and and then on the other side you have all the De DeFi projects and you know uh, concepts that I'm, I'm just discovering myself like it really feels like virtual companies how do you call them daus daos D D no, decentralized. Yeah. decentralized autonomous organization Very good. i am just starting to discover this nice and okay. I think it's it's fascinating. And I, I'll tell you this, it's been now three years I don't build, I just invest, I keep investing. Or I build myself, I work on myself. But it's the first time, literally a few days ago, where I thought, wait a second. Okay, so I get crypto, it's kind of separated from governments. They cannot, or they can, but they cannot really, uh, you know, control it. Like, that's why it's such a mess right now. Like, you, yeah. you, 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 you know, it's kind of on the side, governments are like, in, in trouble right now, which which I love, frankly, but but now now for, now I discovered DAOs right the, uh, that that are able to uh, now you can build instead of starting an LLC or a company in France whatever that it depends on the government you can just build a virtual organization and if if your government goes after you well it doesn't matter because the organization is government less and decentralized in the way it operates where people own tokens and vote i, I find it absolutely fascinating um and i think we're entering a new phase with this and so so what i wanted to say is i i, I feel like building now again when i discovered nice. this i'm like wow this is cool now this is really cool that's awesome that's awesome to hear so uh you said you're pretty new in crypto so when, when did you start to get interested by you know, blockchain, Web3, uh, Bitcoin, like, wh 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 
when is the first time you kind of heard about it? And when is the first time you kind of said, okay, now I want to learn more? Is it for your kids? I, I, is it I, before? Through your contacts in Silicon Valley? Like, how, how did it happen? Look, I'm never ashamed of my mistakes because I think that's uh, number one thing an entrepreneur should accept is uh, uh, when you miss something, it's okay. Or you, when you screw up, it's okay. You know, you try and then honesty and ethics are, are the most important. But, you know, if, if you're going to start something, it can fail. I failed miserably in believing in, uh, in Bitcoin and crypto. I am ashamed, ashamed. To tell you that the first there was this video at the time you might have seen it that was explaining crypto in a very good way i think it was 2010 2012 something like this so i don't know how much was bitcoin at the time but not much and i projected this on the web screen in front of 2000 people with a live stream with you know tens of thousands it was amazing and people were like and i was also like loved it right and the guy who made the video came after me and tried to like tell me this is all copyright which was funny he, he tried to sue me because i posted this video and I, it, it was it was hilarious the whole thing was hilarious and i did not buy any bitcoin but the interest there was something in me that thought this is this is cool then i uh, bought again then i bought for the first time a few years ago only and, and by the way in the whole 10 years last 10 years i had a ton of friends who told me buy this buy that I, I remember like literally six seven six seven years ago i had friends from russia who, who were really like t t telling me put put twenty thousand dollars whatever whatever you you want five thousand <laughs> you know but here do it and i did not and um and uh, of course i missed but it's okay you know i, I you know i I'm, i can survive and uh <laughs> no no complaints and uh, but and i bought again like three years ago just before it crashed and i lost money or uh, two three years ago i forgot when was the uh, notable crash there are many of course and uh and i was like screw this thing you know i lost like a half <laughs> and i sold it instead of holding it so i, I was I, I think it was ethereum at 150 something like this bitcoin i don't remember but like in you know in the thousands right something like that in the thousands yeah. and i i saw that like i'm never touching this again i lost half of it that's stupid and i started again in um uh, so it took me a few years <laughs> to recover and i started again in uh, just in december last year to buy more uh then in march there was a big you know again like correction the deep as you guys say yeah. and uh i didn't sell anything i learned my lesson i, I kept it all and now i'm back above what i bought and uh, and 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 uh, and it's great but now we're experimenting another one uh, it's 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 a good it's a good um it's a good learning curve, and I discovered also DeFi. So I started using uh, so Terra and Anchor and UST, and I think it's amazing. It's really incredible. So, so, so just yeah. Before we talk about more like Terra, etc. Like, what what made you buy in December? Is it what happened last year uh, with the COVID crash, the money printing, uh, or is it just I don't know. Maybe after I don't know. Like what what what. What made you is say, it, okay, I'm going to buy it, now? Is it is it a third of the total supply of US dollars has been printed last year? Is that the number? Or yeah, I think, it was 20, I think it's 20, 25 or something like that. Yeah, exactly. 25%. So here is a government that just prints 25% more of the money and and does it like if there was nothing. And I remember I, I discussed with... Uh, friends who manage fiat right For just uh, like you know good really good investors but in traditional terms telling me yeah it doesn't matter because the dollar it will always be the dollar so it's all good and uh, and 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 we saw what happened a few weeks ago six percent inflation rate so yes i don't trust the government currencies anymore i don't so that was one of the main uh, you know thing when i started putting some money and uh and 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 really realize that this is the best i think still the best place where you can put your money probably with real estate um and of course things that produce values and are, are creating you know something like uh, so 
I would say, you know, what, what I have now is one third in private equity funds, which, which are entirely investing in startups and mostly in seed funds. One third in startups themselves directly, even though I try to not do it myself anymore because I, I, I don't really want to spend too much time on this uh, because I did all my life. And then one third, then honestly, is mostly crypto of uh, my liquid, what I wow. have. Because, yeah, because I, I think that it's the best place to put it. It's uh, Bitcoin is behaving better um, than gold. You know, Bitcoin is behaving better than currencies for sure. And if you take it over the 10 years, uh, it's amazing, right? And and I don't think it's going to stop. I think we'll have probably a big another big correction, but it doesn't matter. Like uh, it doesn't matter when when you buy as long as you as you hold it. And I, I think it's uh, that's why. And so I started accumulating. You know, we're not talking about huge amounts, but um, I, in the end, it starts to be significant in in my life. And then I started discovering. We talk about it when you like, but all the Terra ecosystem, but Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's how I started. I put more on it and I, I realized and I still believe in it. It doesn't matter when you buy, even if you buy at the top, you know, just hold it. And how many friends do I have? And I was in this situation. No, it's too expensive, right? That's the answer. Yeah. It's too high. It's, it's not a good moment. But it's always, like, expensive. It's always expensive. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so basically the, I mean, Basically, the thesis of uh, protecting yourself against uh, fiat currency devaluation is really Bitcoin's case. And you said you bought both Bitcoin and, and ETH in the beginning. Is there something else that attracted you into ETH except that it was the no, second largest crypto? Or like, how did you really go from like, okay, they're printing like crazy. I'm going to buy Bitcoin to, oh, actually, this ETH thing is interesting no, and I'm going to buy some. It's, because it's obvious there is one that doesn't do anything called Bitcoin, right? Where, which <laughs> is like gold. And uh, when you buy it, you actually buy, you know, then we can get into the debate of, uh, you know, even if I think the, the whole debate about Bitcoin destroying the planet and Ethereum, the cryptos, it's it's complete bullshit that the numbers are crazy uh, and stupid. But however, I, I do think that there is some truth to that. When you buy Bitcoin, you buy computers making it. And there's something that bothers me with this. So I'm glad Ethereum is going away from it uh, with uh, Ethereum 2.0. But but yeah, but the if you buy if what my understanding is if you buy bitcoin it doesn't do anything it's like a collector item that you know keeps going up and there is less and less of it great uh, but it's not super exciting and of course then i understand ethereum is what and i did not a few years ago i i absolutely not now i do I understand that's how we make you know most of the contracts and transactions and there's a whole so you're buying if you buy ethereum you're buying a whole ecosystem of apps and people building stuff and it's much more aligned to my values of investing in entrepreneurs right because here people are building things on so bitcoin are not building anything but, and then also of course the ease of transferring it and so on even though the gas costs rights are crazy now so i'm, I'm not now i'm zero on just ethereum I'm, I'm entirely on terra if i own ethereum it's it's bonded ethereum on terra because like paying 80 dollars okay. Eighty dollars for a transaction, for it's, it's like I mean, great! It's a measure of success, so it succeeded very well. But uh, I can pay thirty cent or five cent a transaction on on Terra and do many transactions, and I can, if I want to hold the Ethereum, I can just hold it through Terra, and uh, and then I can do many more things uh, with it. So uh, right now, I'm I'm really holding Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Luna, and PSI. Okay. Okay. So just before that, before going a bit deeper into, into Terra itself and even the fact that you're actually a, you know, just not an investor, but actually a user because you're actually using the things and that's oh, possible. Can, can, can you just before that, tell us about, you've seen kind of the early internet, early mobile, and now you're seeing kind of the early days of blockchain. Like what are the similarities between the early days of of what, what you've seen, especially in the in, in the early days of the blogs and, and now, like, is there something that are similar? And also, what are the, the main differences? Because people always, people of a certain age and maturity can, can, can 
can think by analogies. Okay, this looks like, but also there is some different stuff which would be really interesting to. to well, to hear. I, I'm just gonna answer as I'm thinking because I, I didn't prepare for this. Even though you sent me questions, thank you, but I, I never prepare. I like to be uh, <laughs> spontaneous. But I would say the dream is is one of uh, common things. Like you, you can tell in the crypto, the whole crypto world that people are dreaming about something else. And I really like that because I, I do think the world is in trouble. And, uh, and, and most people see in crypto right now, and I used to only the profit focused, but now I see uh, projects, uh, there is a project uh, focusing on helping the Amazon forest and trees. There are, are non-profit projects appearing on crypto. And, and there, is, there is a dream, basically, that we don't have to depend, depend the same way on local governments that are very often very screwed up and do stupid things. And, and that is the most important thing for me. That is the common point. Because if, you, if you're thinking about the blog, you know, the start of a blog, which turned into Facebook, like to make it, you know, short, right? Like, instead of everybody having a blog, which was my dream, now everybody has Instagram. If it's not Facebook, it's going to be something else. <laughs> with all the negatives that came with it. So I think crypto will see the same. Lots of dreams, lots of utopia, uh, but a real change happening in the world, which did happen. We are able, look at what we're doing now, right? We're talking over uh, the internet, it's being streamed uh, and other people can look. The, my only issue is I would love to see the comments and I don't, I only see you. But anyway, that's, that's gonna be next, uh, next time. But the, 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 I would say the, the utopia, the dream, the people changing the world is the same for the blogs it was on the internet at the beginning, it was communicating and getting together. This happened. And uh, sadly, mostly in a centralized way, as I was saying. But for, for crypto, the, the hope is let's change the world and have new financial systems, new ways that are not government dependent. And I, I, I think of the human uh, species as a, we're all equal. We're all the same. And I think about how many people on the planet, most people on the planet cannot open a bank account because it's getting more and more difficult to open a bank account. When you open a bank account, they ask you for uh, your job, your uh, employment contract, your payroll and, and so on, right? And it's uh, all your assets. Most people in the world do not have access to that. So I see crypto and, and of course, especially DeFi, you can go online, buy, you know, open an app, get a, a credit card. Like if you do it on crypto.com now, let, let me praise them a little bit. Like there, it was one of the first to give you a credit card. You can just live on your Bitcoin and Ethereum, make some profit from it and, uh, and, and, and use it with a credit card. You don't need a bank account anymore, potentially, mm -hmm. right? So I think this is happening now on, on other chains like Terra that, uh, that you, have, uh, you also have um, the credit cards coming. And, uh, and I see the banking system is as much in trouble now than the corporates are to completely reinvent themselves in 10 years. And I think that's what we're seeing. And it is so, so exciting to see that because the banks don't like us. They, they really, I mean, it's a punishment to go to a bank agency, right? So that's one thing in common, which is this dream utopia of changing the world. And some of it is happening. I would say I feel like we're in 1998 with crypto. I think we've seen absolutely nothing. This is why I'm getting now myself very motivated in it. Uh, when people say it's late, it's so not late. Like people were saying it was late in 99, 2003. It was always late. And look at what happened. By the way, it's good to look at the fact that Facebook, uh, like most of the big winners of the internet came late. They, did, they were not there in 96, 99, 2000. They came in the more and became successful in 2000, 2005, 10, 15, right? Um, and, and, and I think we'll see, we might see the same here, that the early players you're seeing in crypto now will only be the winners. I'm, I'm hoping they will be the decentralized guys. So first point in common, the excitement, the, the, the dreams, I would say the risks, because people were losing their shirt on the internet as well. The yeah. bad stuff. There were, there was bad stuff, bullying, and there still is bad stuff. I mean, look at what, what's happening on the internet now and how companies like Facebook are struggling when Trump, you know, gets uh, into the campaign. It was such a mess, uh, filtering messages, hate speech, racism, 
we're like the internet is still very dark and still trying to figure it out so of course you have the same on on crypto with you know people trying to get your money like i, I go into projects and they, t they tell you to go to the telegram channel you go there the first thing i'm getting is a direct message from someone that is trying to get my my wallet yeah. number yeah. so you, you <laughs> sure it's a little scary okay. yeah. right? <laughs> it, 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 so i like to hang out on the discord servers rather than the telegrams because like, oh my God, the number of thieves around, right? Yeah, like it's, it's Cleveland. You have someone <laughs> from anywhere showing, calling your phone. I'm like, how did you get my number? Or like, you know, it's, you have to be careful with that stuff. And that is, uh, that is, uh, that is a little scary. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I mean, kind of as a transition into Terra, um, yeah, what we can see, is, especially in, in uh, Ethereum, like, the, the user interface is really difficult and bad and in crypto in general it's very difficult to to kind of onboard people i mean for people who maybe are kind of used to internet stuff yes setting up a wallet is not that bad but you need to remember these private keys and all that stuff as soon as you use the real DeFi, so which is not the crypto.com or the coinbase of this world like it's actually pretty bad and one thing that terra did pretty well is actually they kind of improved up on that so can, can you tell us how, how you discovered terra and and yeah like what, what what you've been what you've been up to like you said basically you talked about all the different in transaction costs and all that stuff so it means you're actually a user which is the best yep. way to learn it especially in this field so yeah how did you discover terra and uh, what do you think about it and uh, yeah i mean we're, you're treating a lot about it so it would be really interesting to just know uh, how you got into this very simple i was uh, i was talking to my friend friend uh, uriel Oyon, who is very active in crypto he started a wallet called zengo at zengo z-e-n-g-o and uh and he's very knowledgeable and he's been a friend so i have a lot of friends like that you know another one is mike harrington who uh okay, was okay. The founder of TechCrunch, right and now he's one of uh he's He's yes. huge into crypto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And, and, and so I find a lot of friends <laughs> like this. I was seeing Kevin Rose doing podcasts. <laughs> you know, Kevin Rose was doing podcasts on web 20 years ago, and he's now doing crypto podcasts. So, so there's a lot of the same people. And, and that's, that's super interesting. Anyway, Real told me, hey, look at this thing. It, uh, it's called Anchor, and uh, you put your money in. And it gives you 20% compound. So that means 23 or 24%, right? Because you're, you're making interest on your interest. And I thought, okay, great. That's a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> As everybody, right? What is this thing, right? Like uh, there is no one that can give you 20% per year on your money. Where is the risk? Where is the, the, the hidden stuff? So I did my research. I started putting a thousand dollars, you know, and, and, and that's how I got into it. And I, I looked at it and I, I, I found it so smart so so smart the whole concept of terra so for those of you watching maybe who don't know what it is it's it's another chain correct me if i'm wrong right so we're not now on ethereum we are on terra and that chain is based on one thing which is stable coin so stable coins are used to pass money to people because they don't change they're stable they're generally pegged as you guys say to the dollar so they are stable right and they launch this stable coin called ust which is worth one dollar most of the time <laughs> but it is and uh and uh and, and if you put your money there you get 20 percent very simple per year right and it might go down a little bit uh, in the future because it's a lot but right now that's what it gives so i put a little then a little then a little then a little and i thought wow and i, mean, I did my research i thought it was amazing so I, that's how i got into it it's still a little complicated but it's being being solved right now so basically, you put money in in a, in, in a, an exchange like Coinbase. Then you, then then that's where it gets complicated for me. Then you send the, the money to Qcoin, okay. right? And then you're getting right. Qcoin is in China, right? Or is Chinese? Is it? Um, it gets a little scary, right? And then you change your money into UST. You put it there. You get twenty percent. So once you've done that, then you start playing. But now it's being solved, especially with Nexus, right? That is uh, building an Ethereum straight to 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 UST. But anyway, it's uh, it's fascinating, and so I started investing more. But more, more more importantly than investing, I started to learn, right? So then they have this. Uh, so I had Ethereum at the time, 
and I, I, I had Bitcoin, but that Bitcoin I, I, I keep. I, I, I give them a little bad thing, so I, I'll say it. I, you know, I, I think uh, places like Crypto.com and others are, are pretty good because they give you return, very simple to use. But anyway, once I evolved, basically I evolved. <laughs> And, yeah. uh, and you can take your Ethereum and put it on Terra and, uh, and bond it. So now you have BF, right? Which gets a little yeah. complicated for, for people like me at the beginning. And, and, and with this, you can borrow up to 65% of it, which gets risky, but you can borrow less and it's less risky. And you can borrow on it, take that money, put it on Anchor at 20%. So now you have about 8, 8.5% return on, on your Ethereum. Um, and that is... Amazing, because now you're going to make, hopefully Ethereum goes up, not in the last days, but it does. And you get 8%, 8% per, point something percent on an asset that is growing. So that's amazing. So that's, that's the second thing I started doing. And then I started understanding the whole mechanism of Terra, which is that each time someone puts a dollar on Anchor to get that 20%, they have to burn Lunas, their, exactly. their coin, Luna, right? So I started getting and learning that a few months ago. And uh, I think uh, Anchor has now $2.5 billion in deposit, in cash, and more in assets, like $5.5 billion. It's amazing. Yeah, that's and, good. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and so they, they have to burn Luna to cope with the growth, which is incredible. So I think Luna is a very good investment. And uh, so I started buying some Luna. And then I started to discover Nexus. That's where I am right now. How did you discover Nexus? And just maybe before that, I'm just going to recap. So basically, you have the entire Terra ecosystem. And the protocol that enables people to earn about 20% on their UST is called Anchor Protocol. And is one of the first protocols. And it's amazing because it's so simple in that people understand directly that the function is actually earning 20%. And it's actually pretty sustainable when you understand how it works. But then you have a, a bunch of other applications such as Mirror Protocol, where you can basically uh, trade synthetic assets uh, and stocks and a, a whole lot of other protocols that basically are making the ecosystem stronger. And uh, the product, the main product of, of, of um, Terra is actually their stable coin uh, at the center of it that is, that is becoming more and more strong with all these protocols and uh, just just for those who didn't watch it, we had actually a uh, Do Kun, who is the founder of Terra, on the podcast a couple of uh, maybe two months ago, a month ago, and we're doing kind of a master session on stable coins. If you want to, uh, if someone wants to learn more. So now uh, talking about yeah, uh, how did you discover Nexus? Because it's I mean it makes sense if you talk about definitely you say oh, I have ETH and then I bond it and actually making this entire thing automatic, but. There are so many projects out there. I think there's like 150 projects being built on Terra now. How did you get into this one? So this one I found, I found by myself. Okay. <laughs> because I just started reading. So funny enough, I was one of the very first Twitter users uh, when it launched. I really remember like the beginning of the internet being on Twitter with a few hundred people. And uh, as I said, Jack, you know, is a friend, came at my conference, and uh, that's how I got the cool at Loic, you know, just for letters and so on. And, uh, and I completely stopped using Twitter for some reason before crypto. And now all I'm learning is there because you, all the knowledge and the conversations are on crypto. Yeah, crypto yeah. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. And, and now it's getting me to talk about something else on Twitter as well. And I, I think Jack and his team have done a really good job at, uh, at making Twitter much, much better, making it good again. <laughs> and, um, and, and so I am there. I hang out there a lot. But anyway, so the, um, the, that's how I discovered uh, Nexus, which is a small team uh, very fast, very innovative. That solves one very small problem. If you can, if you get into Anchor and you start bonding your Luna and your Ethereum to get this 8.5 percent, then you, you risk um, a risk of liquidation because above 65 percent, uh, if 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 you borrow more than 65 percent of the price of the Ethereum and Luna. Uh, which are the two assets they have right now, uh, then you get liquidated, right? So I always borrow less, of course. But still, yeah, that means you have to look at it, you have to think mm -hmm. about it. And some people, it never happened to me, but get liquidated. So Nexus was built on this idea. We're going to remove the liquidation uh, risk. And uh, I love that idea. And I started like looking into the project. 
sadly too early, or I would have bought tokens uh, way earlier. And um, and and uh, they have other projects. One of them is to solve the other issue that I was talking about: is how you get your Ethereum into UST into Terra. Yeah. So they're doing uh, an Ethereum direct to UST or it to Vault. Yeah. Exactly, to revolt, which is awesome. And then they have pools where you can right now get about 200% uh, return on your money. So I've been learning that, uh, impairment loss, all, all that stuff that is not scary to me anymore because I, I modelized it, you know, I, I looked into it and I, I don't think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a risk as long as you hold, of course, if you buy and you sell, that you should be careful. But it's pretty amazing to be able to do 200% uh on on assets the only problem because I, I as you saw i like to look at the negatives too is they pay you with their token which is psi and of course psi like lost more than half of its value recently but now it's stabilizing going back up again and so i i own some psi and i will uh, keep holding them not selling any but i really like the team i i'm a big big fan uh, of what they're doing and 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 i think this is super interesting too because they actually talk about uh you know decentralized governance a lot and and they're talking about getting out of pools now to do a community pool instead so pretty advanced concept even even in this world i think which i'm which i'm learning but i decided to be kind of focused on terra right now because there's so much time i have and i, I really like to kind of you know know very well one topic so for example riel has been trying to get me into in, into all the uh you know um uh of, like other spaces and I, I because it's so excited and it's like Solana uh, or avalanche yeah 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 yeah. Uh, uh, yeah yeah it's it's just like it's just endless and it can definitely not keep up with everything so you better you focus can't. on one it's impossible absolutely and pro it's very likely there's going to be a multi-chain word in the future so you better become kind of an expert yeah. in a few things and do them I well know expert, but, to do but know what's happening and trust it yeah. right yeah. and now yeah. i'm i'm trusting terra i'm trusting ust trusting nexus as long as they find a way to stabilize their psi which i'm i'm, I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> they do uh but uh, but yeah it's fascinating. great great so uh, last question about crypto before we move on to the most interesting part of the day uh, the, the the interview so the last one is you talked about potentially building something like do you have kind of like a in a sentence or two an idea of what you would do what, what would interest you I, i'm sorry so, so have a question again you talked about building potentially building uh, yeah, 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 yeah. no i have no i'm not building because I'm, I'm spending months in the amazon forest every year so i i, I cannot I cannot build. The only thing I, I'm building kind of is a, uh, a little community of people. Uh, that's funny, actually, because they're mostly entrepreneurs, <laughs> mostly. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a community of people who are uh, interested in spirituality or ancient knowledge. And, uh, and we, so I'm learning from crypto. We're on a Discord. We started on a WhatsApp group. Now we're on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a, a crypto channel because everybody there is interested in crypto as well. So it's like all my worlds are coming together. So I'm spending a lot of time in my own community. Uh, my, like we're, we're, there's a bunch of us, uh, more than 100 people. And because you would be surprised how many, how many entrepreneurs and how many people understand now uh the need of something else than you know making money and now i'm going to talk about the rest but you know Absolutely. profit success fame followers uh whatever you have for me is nothing nothing compared to uh you know learning a spirituality and it doesn't have to be a religion i i was uh, you know i grew up in france and it's very catholic there and i have nothing against it nothing against religions but there is something else that your eyes cannot see that your your hands cannot touch and uh, and so on that is there uh, that's where you go when you die that's where you're from when you were born that's the great mystery of life which is life and that is what fascinates me. And what I'm trying to do is to gather people 
um, to, like I connected for the, for the web, my conference, people wanted to build entrepreneurs, uh, startups in tech. Now I am trying, and it's much smaller, it's like I'm saying 100 people right now, uh, to have together conversations about people who believe that there is something else and that religions might not be the best way to access it. And for me, it's indigenous people. So, but I, I, was that your last question before we talk about that? No, it's a perfect. It's ah, a what am I building? Perfect, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what a perfect building? transition. Nothing. That's all I'm building right now. I, I said I, I feel like the decentralized <laughs> organization, the DAO, is fascinating. And one day I would like to build one, but no, no announcement uh, at all there. Awesome. So, yeah, that was a perfect uh, transition to the, the, the third part, which is basically about spirituality and happiness and basically the meaning of you know, life and all this stuff, how meaningful it is. So maybe we could start with what's your own definition of spirituality and how, how is it, how do you, how much do you think spirituality is linked to actual happiness? Um, okay. So just for background, I was uh, an atheist uh, growing in a country, in a Catholic country. Um, and uh, I, if you talked to me until five years ago, five, six years ago, I would have told you I, I don't believe in anything else. I don't believe in God. I was very, you know, down to earth. Um, and all my life, I've been in this hamster wheel, right? That uh, you get to school. In school, they teach you that you need to go to the best school and have the best marks. And uh, I got in that, you know, and then once you've get, done that, you get your diploma. You either get to a large company or wherever you go, or architect, anything it can be, and then you have to be the best. So everything, our system is based on competition, right? On achievement, competition, and rewards. The rewards are twofold. One is recognition, the other one is money, right? So this is very simple to understand. And, and that's all I was seeing, right? I was like this. Like, this is, this is the world as I see it right oh okay i can i can get success and i can get recognized i can be invited to davos and ted you know and yeah. <laughs> and i can make money wait a second of course i mean, i don't want to sound like a douchebag right so making money is fine right and there are many people struggling but what happens when you make money right you make money you want to make more money when you make more money, you want to make more money. And honestly, in crypto, it's amazing <laughs> how much money you can make or lose, but also how much people are focusing on you on that. They're like, like some of them are like this, right? And, 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 and it's okay. I get it. I was there too. But what I, what I mean is once you've done that, what are you going to do with your money? Mm -hmm. Right, you're gonna buy a car. So it's funny the crypto guys like they, they all show off like super cool sports cars. You buy a car, you buy two cars, you buy a house, you buy two houses, you buy may maybe a private jet, right? Okay, and what? <laughs> Whatever it is, once you're there, what do you do? What do you do? I have, you know, I know maybe you do too. Many wealthy friends. And so, you know, at one point, and I wish you everybody to get to that point, of course, and I, you know, I'm not to, you know, like, uh, I, I, I have uh, a reasonable amount of wealth, I'm like happy, but I'm not, you know, crazy wealthy. And, uh, but I, I, I decided to stop that. Because then, of course, you donate. Okay, because when people get to that point, they start being like, wait a second, I, yeah, sure, I can, I can do one more thing, buy one more thing, but I can also have the wall. So you see Bill Gates and, you know, and, uh, and other people. Or you do crazy shit, like Jeff Bezos, you know, yeah. uh, going to launch rockets, Elon Musk wanting to save humanity to go to Mars, which I think he, he would, you know, I, I wish he would focus a little more like he did for Tesla in improving the planet with less gas, but like, you know, the Amazon forest might not be there in 15 years. The, the coral reef is disappear disappearing in the oceans. Um, we might uh, be in a, dis a complete disappearance of a human species, right? So what are you going to do with your money when we cannot breathe anymore? 
uh, that's you know a good a good question and and by the way this question applies to me what am i going to do now to you know help that and i don't really have the answer i'm, I'm helping indigenous people planting trees in the forest some of the people i work with planted eight million trees uh in wow. the last you know, years yes so i do that and i donate money but frankly it's it's nothing so so i'm thinking about this uh and there is one so here's the key thing here to answer your question what is spirituality I, I think it comes down for me to consciousness consciousness of what we're doing right consciousness that if someone trashes you know trashes a bottle of plastic on the beach i'm going to collect it maybe i'm going to talk to even if it's a kid like tell him hey maybe you should not do that right so consciousness of everything i think that's what the world needs the most is consciousness and that's spirituality for me because we don't know where we're coming from when we're born we don't know where we go when we die we don't know where we go when we dream at night when we sleep there are so many things science does not explain because science tries to slice things right look at uh, you know how it's done how is my skin done how is what molecules are in you know all that but if you look at that right if you dissect my body you will not know me you will say oh here is the dna of loic but you will not know Loic. So science can find your DNA, but doesn't know the answer to that, right? So I think in a nutshell, spirituality is about believing that there is something else, which is very easy because, you know, things don't happen, like trees don't grow, like, to, you know, life, right? There is something there that we don't explain. So there's something else that we cannot see. And what is it, right? Do I have to go to church to find it? Do I have to read books? Do I have to, you know, what is it, right? So I'm looking at that. I'm, I decided to work with indigenous a lot, but I also listen a lot to Buddhist, you know, speakers and talks and uh, meditation is another tool, of course, that I started uh, about 10 years ago, going to retreats. If you close your eyes long enough, meditate, get quiet, you see other things and you start mm -hmm. feeling other things. I highly recommend uh, Vipassana which is a non, not for profit organization, 10 day silent retreat. You will meditate all day long um, and it's very hard. And, uh, and at the end, uh, I was transformed. So that really started 10 years ago for me with meditation, with Vipassana actually, because I went through a divorce and uh, you know, I'm a human being, I have my problems and I have uh, things I have to go through and it was hard. And uh, I did, you know, what people do. I went to see therapists and, you know, and, and uh, it was hard. And I, I found in meditation uh, something amazing that really opened. And then five years ago, um, completely randomly, but I don't believe in randomness. I, I, I believe in synchronicity, a Carl Jung concept of, you know, things that happen, happen, right? Of the people you meet. You know, who knows? Maybe, maybe we're doing this call and someone watches, and you know, maybe we're connected in a way. Nothing is random, I believe, but it's now it's a belief, right? But I, I was uh, in Machu Picchu for the uh, for the birthday of my girlfriend at the time, who sadly died from a cancer, Laila Jana, an amazing not-for-profit entrepreneur, and uh, and a friend of hers uh, told her you should go to to the Amazon forest, and so we went. And there, uh, there was a shaman. <laughs> now we're gonna get weird, right? <laughs> and I said, no, 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 I'm not. I don't believe in that stuff. No, I'm not. I don't want to hang out with a shaman. I don't want to do a ceremony. I don't want to have anything to do. You know, they have uh, plants, right? All kinds of plants. Like uh, they have these big mopachos. They call it like big cigars, type like uh, with tobacco. They started blowing tobacco on me and I, I don't like tobacco i stopped cigarettes i was 30 then no and i of course did <laughs> and that changed my life uh that really really did change my life uh in one night um i would say meditation is amazing but it takes a long time if you work with indigenous uh it's just better it's faster so i started being fascinated by it and i i'm spending now let's say three, four months in the Amazon forest every, every year for the last uh, now two years. And I, it tends to increase, but I like to be in this world too, right? So, but the, I discovered a knowledge 
um, especially a knowledge of the forest. First off, I discovered beautiful people who are living in communities, living the opposite way that we live, right? They have no mm -hmm. money. The money they use as community to pay for, you know, I don't know, solar panels and stuff like that. But really, they, they don't have individual bank accounts or they, they don't have, they don't care. What, what they care the most about is their spirituality. You have to see in context. We killed these people. We have uh, uh, the missionaries went to, first in Europe, by the way, right? Kill all the, what we, we called Gnostics at the time. So this spirituality that, uh, that was um, uh, based, I'm sorry, there is some noise here. <laughs> that was uh, uh, in um, trying to focus. So <laughs> the, we, 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 we killed all the, the shamans of the, 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 our time in Europe, everywhere in the world, because mm. it was like black magic and so on. Then we went to Latin America, somehow Africa with colonialism, and we killed theirs, right? So there are very few left. And those are amazing. They have preserved their knowledge. They have preserved their knowledge of the plants, of... Uh, of uh, the culture and each time i go i learn so much and it's very difficult to of course explain in five minutes but uh but it's really amazing uh you i mean i have quite a few questions but like you mentioned about you said meditation takes time um but this kind of changed my life in one night i mean without going too much into the details what, what kind of things happen that can change your life in one night you know is it like i mean is it i mean i don't know how much you want to talk about that but it, it's how much can you tell us about the kind of thing that can really change your opinion on life that that quickly basically is um, it like discussions with people like is it a, a no, the indigenous ceremonies and like you the know, like well, the indigenous use uh, rituals uh, that are very powerful. So they are based on meditation as well. Uh, some indigenous are very close to Buddhist monks. They sit when they say they do a, a ceremony. They they sit literally like like Buddhist monks, right, all night. Then they use songs. Uh, and uh, again, the parallel is very close to Buddhism because you have those amazing uh, chants there, like throat singing, and so they chant a lot. When they chant, they uh, they say, then you believe or not, they call, right? They open space for other things. So when you get into, you know, believing, and of course, that there is something else, like, you know, spirits and powers of nature. And if you don't believe in it, well, they just watch a thunderstorm, right? Or watch the stars or watch the... By the way, tonight is uh, 600 uh, years, every 600 years, only uh, uh, moon, a solar eclipse. So there won't be any light on the planet, the whole planet for two hours. And it only happens uh, every five years. Uh, but this one is every 600 years. So, so look at things happening in the world, right? Like how, how does uh, a tree grow? How, you know, things, things are alive. So they work with that through songs and they work with that through plants. So they have uh, plants and animals. They have all kinds of, uh, of knowledge that uh, is, uh, is, 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 is um, very unusual. So uh, I got, then I, I mean, I would need two hours, but plants, tobacco, different types of plants. I got uh, one day injected the poison from a frog here. It's called Cambo. It makes you vomit a lot and it cleans your system. Um, it, it's very, very intense and very fast. I do it in the forest and uh, because you, you need to do it with people who know how to do it for generations and generations. And I, I really call it a technology. So this is why I'm so fascinated with mm. learning their knowledge. They, have, they know nothing about science, and what they can do is really truly incredible. Awesome. Uh, we're I mean we're already past one hour. I just have uh, one more question. In, in a 2019 newsletter, you say I just thought that I could lose everything and be happy. Can yeah. you a bit elaborate on that? Did I? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, since I've been doing this work with indigenous and meditation, you know, meditate every day, I have my phases, but right now I do, um, I am never depressed. I am, uh, you know, I understand the basics of 
pain is normal. We all have pain. We all go through difficult stuff. For, for some of your viewers, it might be Bitcoin going down is difficult stuff. <laughs> or coin <laughs> losing 60% of, of its value, right? Uh, I would say crypto is a really good spiritual tool because uh, meditation, for example, is, is based on a concept they call equanimity. Whatever happens, don't do anything, right? Just observe it. So there is you, your body, you think it's you and your mind. But then try to take some distance from it and look at yourself looking at that, right? And then suddenly you'll see pain is not as much anymore. So you could lose everything. <laughs> you might be still okay. But um, uh, it, it's, it's this concept of, you know, basically what you see and all the material things around you are nothing compared to what you see when you close your eyes and meditate. There is a, yeah. a complete different world out there inside of you, right? And, uh, and, and that's what I'm talking about. Then material things become kind of irrelevant. I, I don't want, again, to sound like a douchebag. I, I like being in a beautiful house and, you know, I, but I, I don't do, you know, I used to love beautiful watches. This is my watch now. I go to the forest for months every year. All I have there is a guitar that I'm learning at 49. It's a disaster. I'm learning to sing. I know this sounds crazy, right? But uh, there I have a bag of clothes and a guitar. And that's all I have. And there is, no, there is nothing of our Western world there that uh, is important. Nothing at all. You know, what's important there is is what you believe in. And I, I did over, um, I'm following another spiritual path called the, the Red Road, uh, which is based on uh, a tool that is called the Vision Quest, where for, for four days you go to a mountain or a jungle and you don't drink and you don't eat. So fasting is, is, is very used as well. You go for, with nothing and you're in a little square like this, barely the size of your body, a little bit bigger sometimes, where you cannot go anywhere for four days and you're with the elements. So for me, the first one, it, it rained, it uh, hailed, it snowed. I was in Lakota, with, walking with uh, the Lakotas, in South Dakota, sorry, in Central America with the Native Americans there. It was very hard, very, very hard. Not drinking is, is something. Not eating, okay. Not yeah. drinking, four days, difficult. That's so true. I did uh, three of them. And uh, anyway, I won't get into details. I succeeded on the third one to do four days with no drinking, no eating. And that there, I'm saying that because I learned to have nothing. Like you have nothing. It's, they say it's you and whatever is there, right? The creator, they might say. But which might be a god or might be nature. For me, it's more like nature. That's what I feel. But uh, uh, it's, it's, it's the beginning of that path. And, and it's very interesting because I believe we're caught in this material world of trying to have more. And if there is no spirituality, it becomes very sad. That's, that's what I mean. And uh, there is another world out there that I discovered, makes you really happy, that makes you, I was about to say, so quoting, uh, I think um, it's a Buddhist guru, that uh, Indian uh, Sadhguru who said that, like, you know, pain is normal, suffering is optional, which means you can, you can experience mm -hmm. pain. Yeah. But you don't have to suffer from it, yeah. right? You can have your coin uh, lose 80% <laughs> and you don't have to suffer from it. <laughs> yeah, for example, I know how to do kitesurfing. I can yeah. probably, if I lose everything, teach kitesurfing. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty bad at guitar, so I won't be able to teach guitar. But there are so many things I can do. Uh, uh, so, you know, it's okay. You can always take... I see a lot of crypto guys posting, take the long view, take the broad view, and they take the yeah, chart. Zoom out. Yeah, they zoom take out. zoom out, yes. Zoom so out on life. The... Exactly. So zoom out on the crypto, right? Take it out and you'll see it goes up generally, right? Now, zoom out of, on life, as you said, yeah. and then what you think matters today generally doesn't matter. What will you take with you when you die? Nothing. Not even yeah. the people you love, right? So I would say this work is kind of preparing to die, which is, which is in a way a little scary, but it's actually all about happiness. You know, it's what do you want for your life now? And if it's only focusing on profits and making money, it, it, it's not enough, I would say. It's okay, but it's, it's not enough. There is something else that makes you happy than that. And I, I find it through Buddhist teachings a lot. 
uh, I'm, I'm following a, a guru uh, online that is a sad guru. He's very good. He's no religious, not religious, not a cult. It's just teachings. You can find a lot of his videos. Um, I do a meditation that you don't need anything. You can use the Calm app and just meditate. Um, yeah. I am not religious. And then I learn with two types of indigenous people. One is the uh, Amazon forest. It would, it would take another hour to talk about that, but it's amazing. And then uh, the uh, Native Americans, uh, the Lakotas, I walked a lot on their path and uh, in Mexico, but it's the same path, uh, which is based on fasting and um, on, well, putting yourself in a situation where you have absolutely nothing not even water, not even food, and seeing, seeing what you feel. Basically, it's all about connecting. It's not about suffering. It's about connecting to nature in a very, very deep way and reconnecting with your dreams. I dream a lot. As I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not sad. I can get frustrated when I walk on it. I can get angry still, much less than in the past, but I walk on it. Uh, basically, it's about keeping the distance between what, what you think you are and the the zoom out on life, as you said, but I'm sorry, I could, I could go on forever on this. Yeah. Uh, do, do you fast often? Yeah, I fast often. I, uh, I, I do micro fast. So, so yesterday I didn't have dinner. That's already a micro fast, right? If you have yeah. lunch and you don't eat until, uh, like even a late breakfast or if you do 24 hours, but already skipping dinner, right? Why would you skip dinner? Because, uh, first off, by the way, I, I quit alcohol. Uh, as well, uh, because it's, uh, you know, ethanol is just uh, pretty well documented that it's not good for your body. But also it puts me in a mind state that uh, is not compatible with meditation and all the spirituality, of course, I'm talking about. I feel much better without it. Um, and I, I'm French, I love wine. <laughs> so it's, that's hard. But anyway, I see the benefits of that. Uh, so not drinking is, is one. Then a, it's a form of fasting, right? Sugar cutting sugar, like I'm not saying not eating right yet, but like no alcohol, no sugar or low sugar is already amazing. So when I go in the forest, I do these things called dietas, uh, which are no alcohol, no sugar at all. We remove the salt, no coffee, uh, no, um, no sex at all. Um, and, uh, and that puts you in a very special, anything very little. What it does, it helps your dream life and you start like having amazing dreams, remembering, remembering them. You start having uh, also lucid dreams, which I do now Absolutely. very regularly. And yeah. so fasting is really good if you don't, if you if you cut these things out, right? So try no alcohol, try no sugar or low sugar. Try skipping dinner because if you skip dinner, you're gonna sleep. You if you if you if you eat a big steak, of course, you know vegetarian is better too. Uh, I'm not. I still have some meat, but way less than I used to. I'm big, so I like, you know, I like meat, but I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, sorry. <laughs> and uh, I'm so sorry for the animals. And then um, uh, you will dream better and you will not, not have to process all that. So you, your body is available as much more energy for something else. This is the, the first true. benefit. And then, yeah, I, I fast sometimes for three, four days uh, in the forest. And, uh, and in vision quests, but uh, not eating is the first thing you can try. Skipping, skipping a dinner is a good, good habit, for example. Then you extend. It's not dangerous if you keep water. You can, I, I fasted for seven days without water, with water. And then I started to do the dry fast, so no water. That's way harder. And I, that never, I would recommend never do alone, right? Do it uh, supervised. Uh, and, and particularly in uh, a, with a spiritual context like a uh, vision quest. But basically, if you cut the water, uh, other things happen, like uh, visions. So we were talking about, you know, animal substances and plants that indigenous have been using since the age of times. Um, you can, you have these same visions, you know, experiences with fasting, especially with no water. And if you do it too long, it can get dangerous. So it, it, science says that after four days, you can die. So be careful with no water. But I, I did four days. And yes, you get very close to death, <laughs> which is a teaching in its own. Uh, and I did it supervised, you know, and uh, I had the most amazing dreams and visions and experiences. It was incredible. But I do that once a year, four days, no water, no more. 
and I would say it's very good for you actually because your system resets entirely, Absolutely. starts creating. If you if you Google it, you'll see fasting has amazing, amazing properties because your system just gets out your know, shit. And of course, in the forest there are plants that also help you. That frog thing that I put in my shoulder uh, makes you vomit. There are plants that make you vomit, and uh, and and it's about cleansing. You know, when you eat a tomato that has grown with chemicals on it some of them you cannot get them out so it's it's all about how you treat your body and and your mind and uh, uh i have i would say i feel way younger than 10 years ago i feel much better younger uh more balanced less upset less complaining i'm working on it because i'm french we like to complain a lot even as a joke right but uh, but yeah i highly highly recommend it yeah, I've done, actually, I've done the, the water fast five days, seven days, even nine days once to actually ah. heal some, some pretty bad stuff. And uh, it's incredible. Like you just see better, you hear better, you sleep shorter, you have better dreams and you heal like both physically and mentally is just incredible. And uh, I could only, re I mean, actually, every time someone is around me doesn't feel good. First thing I say is like the kind of life hack is fast, like a few yeah. days just on water. Yeah. It's like... You, like it's after two or three days, you're going to be in ketosis and you're going to feel so calm and amazing that literally nothing could happen to you. Like it's just incredible, the feeling and the, yeah. it's incredible. So if you, if you had two Vs, do it in nature. It doesn't have to be the Amazon forest. You can do it in any forest, any mountain, by the ocean. So do that and then meditate. And if you do those three... Yeah which anyone can do and we're not talking about you know drinking plants or getting injected uh, frog poison <laughs> we are talking about very basic stuff it's amazing it's uh it can really change you yes but careful with no water right it's very hard yeah. how, how maybe very last question how did this uh, kind of new lifestyle uh, how does it affect your relationships with friends and you know family oh. and like I would say I have, more, I have more friends than ever. I have uh, I tend to hang out with people who have this spiritual, you know, opening um, or consciousness who are conscious, right? I, I tend to hang out. That's one thing. I tend to hang out much more with these people because we talk the same language, right? Um, and, uh, and, and and so that's one difference. The other the other thing is, uh, as long as you don't become too extreme, which I did two years ago. Two years ago, I went for a month and a half in the forest, and and I, I came back a little, you know, a little somewhere else, <laughs> <laughs> or a lot somewhere else. Because when you're there, you know, I, I, you have to think about it. It takes three days to go where I go, right? You take like five planes, then eight-hour boat, then you arrive in indigenous land, and they live completely differently. They live in nature. They don't eat the same. They, they do ceremonies almost every night. It's a tall, It's like you're in Avatar. That's the best, you know, thing I can describe. When I go there, I am in Avatar, and, uh, and including the destruction. Right, you can see that happening with uh, farmers to destroy the forest, to you know produce uh, corn for the beef and and so on. So it's absolute an absolute disaster. But let's not get there. I am of course you know helping, donating money to plant trees, but you go to another wall. So sometimes it's a little different, difficult to come back to this wall. And I was a little extreme and intense, so it created a uh, you know. But now it's okay. Now I. Uh, I'm careful about what I share as well. Like uh, mm -hmm. I had crazy experiences. One night I was uh, gathering wood in the jungle and I got uh, a bite from a deadly snake. And uh, and I was, uh, you know, when we talked with indigenous, like my, my hand became like, like this. And uh, do I go to hospital? What do we do? And they started instead doing rituals, right? And I was like, whoa. Wow, like my hand was like this and uh, everything went fine. Another time in the forest, I got a really bad bacteria. You know, there is very, we're talking about COVID, there is really strong bacteria and stuff there, plants and animals, of course. And uh, I got, uh, I, I got, um, you know, like a, some form of flesh eating bacteria. So it, it opens a hole in your hand and I don't want to scare people from the forest. The forest is amazing, <laughs> but there's stuff like I'm talking about five years going there, there's stuff. 
Yeah, You'll yeah. see snakes and stuff. And anyway, and I, I trust them. So the indigenous told me, no, 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 no. We're going to make a tea with this plant, put the plant on it, drink the tea for two or three days, and you don't have to go to hospital. And it was pretty scary. And you know what? It was gone. Three days. Amazing. So I, okay. I learned wow. to speak. We call this uh, surrender, right? Yes. So they yeah. have knowledge. But then, you know, they also know the limits of their knowledge. Most of them are vaccinated, for example, because, you know, they are afraid of COVID like everybody else. That many elders died from COVID. So they also use science of our teeth. Okay. You know, they use toothbrush. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Genial. Okay. Awesome. So basically, you'd say you found the, you went pretty deep uh, down the spiritual rabbit hole, but you also found now kind of like balance between these two worlds that still enable you to earn 20% uh, on your dollars while at the same time be conscious that there is all this stuff out there that is actually I, more yeah. important for self-happiness. I literally go from moving money on Terra to from a token to another token to a deep meditation, taking my guitar <laughs> and singing an indigenous song very loud in the living room. Uh, yeah, I can go from one world to another. And, awesome. uh, and talking crypto or talking entrepreneurship and hopefully one day I'll do or taking calls from entrepreneurs like uh, yesterday. I tend to do these calls now more and more with projects that have something non-profit or something that is conscious, right? And I think we'll see more and more conscious funds, including in crypto. As I was saying, you know, plant trees, save the forest. Like how about, uh, there is actually on Terra one uh one non-profit uh, project that uh, will take a little percentage of your anchor interest so it, you know say you make 20 percent. how about you give a percent of that to plant trees in the forest oh my god right one Very click cool. yeah. just do that right there is a project like this and i actually want to talk to them to see if we can organize a fundraiser based on that automated yeah, you just connect your wallet you give a whatever it is, 1% from your gains, whatever you choose. And, uh, and this goes directly into planting trees, right? And the crypto guys love gamification and so on. So maybe you could put on your profile instead of putting an NFT that uh, you have planted a million trees yourself this year. How about that? That would be cool. So this is, you know, if I build, it will be something like this or an event again. Um, I, I, this is why I'm doing this, you know, kind of community that I call synchronicity of friends who think the same because I, I feel there is more and more entrepreneurs who are also awakened, awakening, right? Who are also conscious and want to help the world and are spiritual, or are learning spirituality and with only some places to exchange. There are many, but many people are not as well. So there is so much room to grow. And I feel the world as at the same time as the internet makes us, it makes all these things possible like crypto and before that, you know, the web and the blogs and so on and Facebook. Now there is a huge movement of people thinking and seeing that the material world is not enough, that destroying the planet is not an option anymore. We will all disappear with it. And then there is something else. And, uh, and that is, I can tell you, it's growing as fast as crypto, I think. Uh, because I can see around me, when you were saying, does it cut you from your friends and family? It, I have, I've never had so many friends because they, we all want to do something, right? And discuss about this. And it starts by changing yourself, which might sound a little selfish at the beginning. But if you don't change yourself, if you don't help yourself, if you don't become more conscious yourself and be more aware of what you eat, what you watch, do you watch stupid stuff? Do you watch porn? Do you watch, you know, or do you try to, are you trying to learn something about the world, right? Uh, what do you eat? What do you watch? What do you put in your body? Who do you hang out with? Do you party all the time drinking or, you know, do you go to meditation <laughs> retreats, right? And I'm not saying I'm not a monk. I have not become a monk. I love, you know, enjoying things of life, but more and more conscious people are appearing. They want to learn. They want to behave differently. They want to help. And I think this will be as big, if not bigger, than what happened with the internet. And it is just starting now. And this is why I'm so deep into it, because it starts by first changing myself. And I'm, that's what I'm doing now. I'm healing myself. This is why I spent months in the forest at the beginning purging, as we say, like vomiting a lot to remove all my stuff. You know, because those plants are amazing in helping you 
you know, get rid of your guilt, get rid of, you know, I lost my sister and father for, and your know, girlfriend for cancer. I, like everybody, we all have our problems. This helps you a lot and a lot faster than meditation. So I do both. But now I, I don't purge. <laughs> I go and I help the indigenous and work with them. And I, I learn their technology. That would take another podcast, right? But it's a technology. I'm, technology I'm yeah, sure yeah. It is a technology. But we have known nothing about that science, science that mostly does not explain it. And you won't explain it explain it by taking plants there. They have a garden with 3,000 medicinal plants. 3,000. They have a plan for everything. You won't understand it by taking the plants, putting it in a lab, trying to make pills with it. We do that. Sure, it makes medication works, but you don't understand it really uh, uh, if, you, if you do that. So this is fascinating. It's, I think, going to be, it's already a new movement, I think, uh, which is still small in the world. But I think we will see a revolution way bigger than what we've seen for, with the internet and crypto with, let's call it consciousness, spirituality, but consciousness to make it easy. If you, if you could take the same level of awareness that you have now, spiritual, and you went back 20 years, do you think you would have done some things differently? Yeah, you yeah I would have done everything differently. Okay. <laughs> But it's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. It, it's okay. You know, everything happens for a reason. I believe now that I'm 49. You could say, oh, wow, he's old. Or you could say he's young, right? I like to the second option. I think 49 today is very young, 50, right? There is some uh, indigenous traditions that, uh, that think that at 50, you finally reach a level <laughs> that you can, you know, you, you're basically, you, you can, you can maybe think you're going to be wise one day, but I would totally do things differently, but it's okay. I think what I've learned in the past, creating conferences and events and startups and helping entrepreneurs and all my connections as well. I have many connections with now powerful, wealthy, influential people that I'm in touch with, some of them which I bring to the forest, right? I, uh, I, I did a few trips, I do one next year again, where I bring these people to the forest and meet the indigenous. They come back as transformed as I was, and uh, better in every possible way. And, uh, and, and, and so I, I, I think I'm, it's actually totally perfect, right? It's like uh, one of the Buddhist teachings is accept what is. There is only one moment is now, right? So I'm not going to regret that I should have done. No, what is, is great. I've learned to be an entrepreneur. I have amazing connections. I have people inviting me to do videos. <laughs> I, uh, I have some means, right? I have friends who have many more means. If we put those together, maybe one day we, uh, we do something really big. And that's what I, I hope to do for, for the planet, right? To help or for consciousness, not to make money. That, that is not, you know, like it, it's, you know, it's fine. Um, that, that wouldn't be the goal anymore. Um, uh, so I don't regret anything. I have a feeling I will do something else one day, but I, I don't know yet. I'm working on myself right now. It's a, it's a long, you know, it's a long process. Wow. I think that was perfect to basically wrap up today. Thank you so much. Do you have something you want to add for yeah. uh, our generation? <laughs> I mean, you kind of said most of it already. And I think especially based on the kind of envir envir environmental issues. I think our generation are like pretty, I mean, pretty con conscious of it and actually care a lot. So that's like a good first step towards that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't I know if you want to add. I, yeah. I have three sons who are 19, 24 and 26. So um, yeah, 20 actually. <laughs> so. Um, uh, I know when you generation a little bit from them and I, I am super positive about it, but because we can't continue this way, we just can't, yeah. we're, we're screwing up the planet. We are destroying ourselves. So things will happen. It's okay. It's going it to happen when we need, maybe we need another, you know, Trump or another, uh, virus to remind us. And I'm completely against Trump, just to say, <laughs> you know, but I mean, this kind of shock, right, to a system, like seeing like what racism does, what, uh, what COVID does, uh, sometimes I could have done, stopping, at least stopping the world. I'm not talking about killing people. I'm talking about like a, a 
worldwide pandemic stopping the system, right? Or slowing it down tremendously, everybody in fear. That's mostly what I'm talking about. Uh, because if you look at how many people COVID actually killed compared to cigarettes or alcohol, it's actually not so much, right? But I'm talking about the fear, the, the worldwide scale I think we'll see more and more of that uh, and natural phenomenon, right? Because the planet is, uh, the nature is angry at us. We, we didn't behave, behave, we didn't treat her very well. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe yeah, the, 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 the key takeaway of today is it's okay. Uh, zoom out on life. And <laughs> especially when shit happens, think that basically what's, what's this on the grand scheme of life? And it's basically it's never, Christmas. It's basically... Yeah, look at the moon, look at the sun, look at the stars. <laughs> like if the whole planet Earth disappeared, nothing will happen. What would happen in the world? Nothing. It would just yeah. be like, you know? So if you zoom out, most things that you care about, fear about, are make guilty. Make no sense. Yeah. Feel, feel guilty, make sense. guilty about stress, like it doesn't make you sleep. Uh, you won't get much angry anymore. Because uh, there's no point. <laughs> no. Just take, take the long view, go in the forest, go, go see trees, go sit by the ocean. Or watch, just, a, or, yeah. or watch a nice sunset. The other day we were watching a sunset here exactly. and I was just like, it's so peaceful. And like, why am I even bothering about anything in life? Yeah, just... Exactly. Great. Yeah, Thank you so much. Out, turns out, just the last word for me, but turns <laughs> out you, you will discover... We can discover... continue for a long time. No, um, no, no, but turn... <laughs> Turn, 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 turns out that, of course, you need shelter, you need food, you know, the basics, right? And yeah. a lot of people still don't have that. But once you have that, you don't need much more. You don't need much, you know. Everything is a construction. It's all like, so I call it the matrix, right? <laughs> like many people, we're in a matrix that makes us think that we need all those things. But it, it, yeah. if you went to the forest and saw the indigenous leave and how happy they are, you don't need all that stuff. Most of that stuff. You need food. You need a, a roof, yeah. yeah. You need friends, a community, uh, but you can be happy with nothing otherwise. Great! Wow, that was awesome. Thank you thank so you. much. No, thank you. My pleasure. It was incredible. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.